Batman on the Neds was released to coincide with the film in 1989, and just like the film, is pretty darn good. And just like Batman, if you don't treat him with the respect that he deserves, he will kick your ass. Now, I'm sure if you're watching this, you're probably familiar with the game already in some way or another, so you'll probably know that it's infamous for its difficulty, and this is definitely warranted. The game itself isn't very long, as you fight your way through the streets of Gotham, in the Ace Chemical Factory, there's some art gallery, and ending up of course at the Clock Tower where you have to kick the crap out of Joker and his massive gun. The levels though are all reasonably sized, being split into three stages, and then a boss fight at the end, or let me rephrase that, more accurately, a hard boss fight. A damn hard boss fight. The in-stage enemies put up enough of a fight, and much like a lot of these old NES games, the enemies themselves make no sense whatsoever when compared with the source material. There are random robots, thugs, frogmen things, and even the damn Metal Gear makes an appearance. A lot of these enemies put up a hell of a fight as you fight your way through the stages, armed with your fists or a selection of batarangs, missiles and the like. Amusingly, when you select your fists, it just says Batman, making it look like you are just Batmaning the enemies and I'm more than okay with that. But the bosses, Jesus, the bosses, even the first boss, who apparently is some kind of Iron Man, you know, the Iron Man from the movie, puts up a fight, but has a pretty easy pattern to fi figure out. However, some of the other bosses are just downright unfair and kick the living hell out of you for ages until you are lucky enough to beat them. A saving grace is that you do have unlimited continues, so you can keep trying and you will eventually get through this. There's no passwords or save slots though, so you're going to have to learn fairly quickly. Batman himself controls really well and is very responsive. He has a really nice wall jump that is used throughout the game for some really tricky platforming, which unfortunately can lead to some instant deaths that do feel a bit cheap. Graphically, the game is excellent, Batman looks good, and while the enemies don't really have anything to do with Batman, also look fine. There is a really cool death animation for Batman where you burst into a bat-shaped flame, and this is pretty lucky because you'll be seeing a lot of it. The sound in the game does the job, there's no complaints there. The music though doesn't have any kind of Batman feel to it sadly, and is really the only letdown for the game. So as a Batman game, this is really good but be prepared to take a beating. If you're the kind of person that gets frustrated at games, then maybe don't go for this. But if you like a good challenge and love the bat, this is definitely for you.